Every Second is a Galaxy, an ayahuasca trip report by Sherlock Alien, posted to Earwid.org November 29, 2007. It has been nearly a whole year since my last ayahuasca experience. In the year that passed, life brought me many learning experiences, and I was interested to see how much I'd really grown, and how much was just my ego thinking I had grown. A friend called me to say there was a shaman from an Amazon tribe passing a few days here, and it would be doing a ritual in a nature place in the farm of some of a friend. I was immediately interested. The shaman was young in the consensual age count, 28 years old, but was a wise old man in an internal essence age, as I could see in his eyes the first moment I met him. I arranged a ride with the owner of the farm, and we went on Saturday afternoon, knowing the ritual would take place Saturday night, around 10pm. What follows is a description of what I passed through, even though I could only express an inkling of my experience, it became very long, so try to make an interesting read, and hope you all enjoy it. The Place and the People It all took place in a circle in some forested area in this friend's farm, but close to the house in case someone needed a bathroom or something of the kind. In the middle of the circle there was a fire, that was kept alive by one specific guy. Around it were trees, as well as the sound of insects and birds, and in the distance there was nice green hills to look at. It was in a total of 20 people, half of which I actually knew. It was really more people than I'd expected, which made me quite apprehensive since the group influences a lot about how the experience will go. There were about five people who were taking it for the first time, and all of the people in the ritual were reasonably young, in their twenties, and there were six females in the group. In Santo Daime rituals, normally they divide the circle so that one half of it is where the females are, and one half where the males are. They say it has an energetic reason, but the shamans don't do that in this tribe. It is a less rigid ritual, so the girls and the guys were sitting mixed. The girlfriends could stay next to their boyfriends as well. The shaman explained to the first timers a little bit how each person will go through their internal voyage, and how it may at some times get rough but that he will be there taking care, and that the difficulties and also the purging and cleansing, vomiting, crying, sweating, nose running, is an important part of the process that some may have to go through. He also explained to those that didn't know that he would be singing in his own language, but that the language was not about us understanding the lyrics, but rather to feel the energy of the sounds. Each song had a definite objective, some to increase the visions, others to increase the strength, others to bring in inner peace, etc. He then said it would start soon, that we should all concentrate, and he went to walk around the circle a few times smoking his natural tobacco in a shamanic pipe. And so, it starts. The shaman took two glass bottles out of a bag with a thick brown liquid inside. He made some prayers in his native language and started giving to people. He gave a counterclockwise order, each time looking at the person first, then filling up the glass accordingly to how he felt it was needed for each person. In my turn, the first bottle was finished, and it was already on the second one. This made me a little apprehensive, wondering if it would actually be enough. Especially since last time I took the first glass, it was not enough for the trip to start. How little did I really know. He filled up the glass almost to the top, and I drank it down in a few big gulps at once feeling that very strong and particular taste. The shaman then started singing very low, and was gradually getting louder in the perfect timing as I started to feel the energy. This energy started like a peculiar lightheadedness, and increased to a strong body feeling, almost as if my parts were melted together. Sometimes it was very hard getting out of a position, but really stuck. One position I stayed for long moments, for example, was sitting down with my legs crossed, holding my face with both hands and with the elbows resting on my legs. Many times I lost sense of where my hands were, as well as where my face was, and I started having visions of fractals, shapes. After some time had passed, the shaman asked if those that were not feeling anything yet wanted to take a second dose. I was feeling it, but I said I wanted to anyway. I felt as if I wanted to go all the way down the hole, inspect my soul from the very beginning, and I gulped down the second glass feeling that soon I would have one of the strongest experiences of my entire life. The Eternally Long Peak 
The visions had increased tenfold. The shaman's singing was incredible. I felt a very wise science in the chants. The songs were fractals in themselves, with a very intelligent mix of repetition and changes. He maintained certain tones for long, whilst others were really quick. There was nothing random about it. Some songs brought full visions I couldn't believe was possible. I was seeing worlds inside my eyes. It was very hard keeping my eyes open. I couldn't really stare at things. Too much light, even if it was night time. So I kept them shut most of the time. There were layers and layers and layers of some impressive dynamic colourful material. Light emanated from every part. A light that contained all knowledge of existence. And then, I saw them. There were beings, and they were all looking over me. They were very advanced, dynamic, colourful, but half transparent, so I couldn't really delineate where one ended and where another began. I started to feel a certain energy knot in my stomach, and they were looking straight at it. I noticed the knot slowly coming up, and I saw that it was the beings bringing this knot up. I felt like I wanted to vomit to get that knot over and done with. But nah, you really think it's that easy? It was going slowly up, and I saw these beings operating me. It wasn't scary per se. It wasn't as if I was being abducted by aliens or something. It was beings of light I saw with my eyes closed, and I felt that they only wanted good. They were operating on my knot, and they were pointing at it. I had this definitive feeling and intuition that they were telling me that when this comes out, I was going to receive a present. And after I don't know how long, me being lost in myself stuck to where I was sitting with this half nausea, but half beautiful visions and light experience. I saw it was time to take it out. I stood up, God knows how, took two steps and started to vomit. It was really a cleansing. I felt like I got rid of that stuck energy pattern. I was feeling like I wanted to pee for a very long time, so I used the opportunity to go to the bathroom too. As I was walking around, finally free from that bad feeling inside of me, I was receiving lessons after lessons. I had visions of myself sitting in the computer wasting hours and hours. I saw myself doing nothing, even when I was externally doing something, like doing my stretches or exercises but having my mind already thinking of what to do next. I saw how much I should really do things, take initiative, use every second properly. And it was at this moment, I was on the way to the bathroom, and I ran into this guy that was also walking around a bit. I looked at him and said, Man, we can't waste time. Gotta make life worth living, you know. And he answered me back, I know. Every second is a galaxy. We had read each other's minds. I continued my way with the lessons going over and over in my mind. I knew something had to be done when I got home, and I almost wanted to already be home so I could put it into practice. But there was much more to go through still. Over and over I was receiving lessons of me needing to make my life the best it could be. I wanted to be the best person in the universe. I felt like the most important question to continually ask myself was that if I died right now, would I truly be satisfied with this last second? I went back to the circle and listened to the shaman singing. It was the most beautiful thing I had ever heard. I wished he could sing forever. In normal height, he was smaller than a friend we nicknamed Dwarf, but as I was sitting there, I saw him as a giant. He was huge infinite meters tall, watching all over us, singing songs from an ancient past. I visualized him with a bow and arrow, or a shield like a warrior. He was fearless and didn't hesitate for one second, even though he had the huge responsibility to deal with everyone's energy. Every once in a while, someone would vomit. This was a part of the ritual though, the language of the bowels. The incredible part was that the person was not alone in this. We were all there with them, whoever was going through purging. We were a unity. We had a strong energy string connecting us all. Every time someone was purging, we were giving them strength and love inside of us to persevere. I had just gone through the life worth living stage, and it seemed to be quieting down. 
the shaman said we'd make a pause. He went one by one around us, asking us how we were, if we needed anything, if we wanted to say something. He made jokes of us as well, saying we should go brush our teeth, take a shower, tasks that were obviously impossible to most of us, so we were all laughing along with him. It showed me even more how attentive he was to us, how it wasn't just any guy there leading the session, and after a few minutes he said that now the last part would come. Whoever wanted to take another dose was free to do so, so of course I went for it. I gulped a smaller glass in one sip and sat down in my place. The last and maybe strongest part was about to come. After a few minutes I started having visions of animals. I saw life in all of its manifestations. I saw how it was all the same. All of these were God. Each form of life was me in that stage of evolution. I could see it in their very eyes. A vision of a butterfly came and I saw God or consciousness or myself trapped in the butterfly's body. I saw that part of the story where I was still a butterfly. This was followed by a vision of my dog, and I saw in her eyes how she was also consciousness, being received and transformed according to her innate possibilities. I felt sorry for my dog, for still having to go through so much evolution, so many lives, till she reaches the end. I thought of myself and how I'm further up the ladder, and I saw how this doesn't make it easier at all. The more we grow, the more responsibilities we have. We have to take account for everything that is below us, to be able to know everything that we have passed through until our stage in evolution. It is akin to pushing a coil, a spring of some kind, that the more you go forward, the more strength you have to make. I saw how life worked, like some sort of game. Just like we can visualise a game of chess for example, I visualised what the game of life was really about. It is a non-linear story that we all go through, from single-celled organisms to complex animals like us humans, and then the inner evolution we humans have to go through. All forms of life are consciousness manifested in these particular bodies, having to go through the experience of that level, dying, being reborn, and it's a lot of suffering, a lot of learning, but the universe feeds on its very essence. In this interconnected system, each form of life is like an alchemical mechanism, receiving, transforming, and emanating certain vibrations needed for the evolution of that consciousness and for the cosmos itself. Life is an integral part of the universal balance. It all depends on us. While I was having these visuals, a friend touched me. I opened my eyes and he asked me to come with him. I went with him and somewhere a bit farther away, the shaman was sitting down in the forest, and he asked us to join him. I lit up a joint I'd pre-rolled, and we all started smoking. The shaman looked at me, as if he knew what was just starting in my mind. As I sat down with them and closed my eyes, there came the negative visions. I felt all the excesses and non-harmonious things we humans do. I saw oil spills, murders, animal mistreating, Dogs being beaten, pollution, fights, and I cried from the bottom of my heart. I cried so very strongly, and then it would get calmer again, to which I would cry once more, and this would occur in cycles. I felt the universe itself worked in some superimposed cycles, like gears connected to each other. It was the same with time, which is cyclic, as the Myers saw it even though from our perspective it gives the impression of a linear time. And the same it was for my suffering. It came and went with a rhythm. I felt like I had to go through it. I was going to see those things for as long as was necessary. I continuously went back to crying a lot, seeing all the shit humanity makes. I was like Atlas, holding the weight of all the earth, barely supporting. I saw Mother Earth being raped, and I was being crucified for it. I was paying right now for the world's karma, and it was not easy. The shaman the whole time sat next to me, watching over me. At some point he asked, 
Do you think it's enough? Do you want me to stop it? Or do you want to continue with discipline? He was not just saying this. He really did have the power to stop my trip if he wanted to. I did think about stopping, but decided for the hard way, and I answered that I would continue. He nodded, accepting my decision. I continued to feel all these things for a while in cycles, but not in never moving repetitive cycles, but rather like spirals that go back and forward and back again, slowly going up into higher levels of understanding. I finally realised why I was feeling that, so that I didn't repeat those mistakes, so that I made my contribution to the world. Everything we do, we have to think of the consequences not only for us or for the ones around us, but also for all the generations that are to come. Every decision must be done with all our great, 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 great grandchildren in mind. After this, the trip slowly settled down and the shaman closed the session. I could not help but feel thankful for all of these visions I experienced. Even with all the hard parts, it came with a feeling of hope, of a positive responsibility, and of a desire for getting better. I am truly glad that I had this opportunity, and I will try to put in practice all I have learned from it. Thank you all for reading.